Hey friends, welcome back to Lab C6. I am Mrs. Hill, and today we're gonna be working through the chicken leg dissection lab. Um, we've spent the last couple of weeks in class talking about integumentary system, muscular system, and skeletal system found inside the human body. Today, during our dissection, we're going to look at the structures and function of each of those systems in a chicken leg uh, and make some observations about what we can find. We're going to start out today with just a quick materials check and then we'll get rolling. So, here we go! All right, so you can see here that we're starting out with a large sheet of yellow butcher paper just to give us a nice clean workspace. I've got a piece of wax paper here with just a raw chicken leg that I bought at the grocery store. It's the same thing you cook at home um, when you're working in the kitchen. I also have a clean paper towel here. Um, obviously, I've got my lab manual ready to go, and then I've got my toolkit with all of my dissection tools. You can see this toolkit's labeled with the number 23. So next to your name on your lab manual, make sure that you go ahead and write the number 23, just as a future reference. Inside my toolkit, I have a pair of forceps that are clean. Um, I have a pair of dissection scissors, also clean and dry. And then a uh, probe as well, also clean and dry. I'm just going to move this box out of the way for us and we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so now that we're ready to get started, the first thing that I'm going to take a look at are the structures in the integumentary system. You know that in humans, the integumentary system is not just the skin, but also hair and nails. In the case of a chicken, that would also include feathers. Um, so I'm looking at this integumentary system. I can actually see, and if you look pretty closely here, I think you can see it as well, this kind of yellowish tissue on the outside of the skin here. That's a little bit of fatty tissue that we can see. And then there are also these bumps and ridges along the outside of the skin. And if I look closely enough, I can actually see some tiny little feathers sticking out. I think that those bumps and ridges are actually follicles um, where this chicken has been defeathered. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove, we'll see how easily I can do this. I'm going to remove the integumentary system so I can get a closer look. And you'll notice this isn't a super easy process. There's lots of connective tissue here. That tissue is pretty similar to the connective tissue you have inside your body, um, which is pretty important because if your skin wasn't attached to your muscles, it would slide around on the outside of your body kind of like a sock when it gets twisted on your foot. And you might end up, you know, with like an eyelid down here on your elbow or something. That'd be kind of awkward. So this connective tissue is important to most living things in regards to keeping their integumentary system intact. You can see that was not an easy process to get that separated. So I'm going to continue to get this laid out and then we'll take a closer look at the integumentary system. All right, so now that I've got my integumentary system completely laid out, I'm just taking a look at both sides. And like we talked about earlier, you can see the follicles in that integumentary system. And when I feel the outside of the skin, you can actually feel those ridges where the follicles are located. But when I turn my skin um, to the inner portion where the hypodermis would be found, um, it actually feels kind of rubbery and really slick, almost a little bit slimy to me. Um, down here, you can see some more of that yellowish tissue. That is actually fat um, deposits that were from the chicken. And this kind of slimy, um, rubbery, slick feeling tissue um, is all fatty tissue and connective tissue, again, that helps hold the integumentary system in place and <clears throat> connect it to the muscular system. So now I'm gonna set the, um, the skin, the chicken skin aside, and I wanna take a look at the leg as a whole. So normally when this leg is attached to the chicken, it would be upright like this, and you can see lots of pink muscle here around this chicken leg, all the way around, lots and lots of muscle. And it uh, narrows down to a joint right here, and it may be hard to see in the 
video, but this is actually a hinge joint. Um, it slides back and forth a lot like your knee joint, and there's a little cap here, a lot like your kneecap. We'll look at that here in a little bit. But for right now, what I'm most interested in is the muscular system. And we know that the muscles are connected to bones by tendons. Those are important connective tissues, both in our body and in the chickens. Um, but to really get a good look at those muscles, I need to cut the tendons away from this bone so that they're no longer connected. So I'm taking my scissors here and down here close to this hinge joint, I'm just cutting through all of this connective tissue, all of these tendons <clears throat> that connect those muscles to the bone. And then I'm just going to take my finger and insert it between the muscle and the bone. And you can see that some of that tissue is kind of see-through. Each muscle inside this leg is surrounded by connective tissue. What I want to do is I want to kind of break through some of that connective tissue to separate out these bones and get an idea, I'm sorry, separate out these muscles and get an idea of how many of them are actually in here. So the pink tissue that you're seeing is actually muscle. I don't want to cut or break through that. I just want to cut and break through some of the clear connective tissue to get a better idea of just how many muscles I'm looking at. So I'm running my finger through here, separating out some of those muscles. I'm going to continue to work through that and then we'll take a look Oh yeah, look at that. You can see some of those muscles already separating out. Um, and if I pull this one, let's see, and break some of that connective tissue. Some of it's a little bit tough to get through. And this was a pretty fatty chicken. He had lots of fat tissue on him. Um, what I can actually do is I can pull apart each individual muscle. And you can see there the muscle itself and then the white tendon that connects that muscle to the bone. So um, I'm going to continue working on this for just a minute and then I'll let you guys take a look at what all I've found. All right, so now that I've taken a little time to separate out some muscles and tendons, um, I actually found 15 inside my chicken leg, but I know um, I had to pull, for the sake of time, some of the meat off of the leg, um, and I know that I could have found more than 15 had I had the time, um, but I do want you to see that they vary in size and shape, um, but you know, you can see the pink muscle down here, and then the tendon has kind of a white um, yellowish color to it that connects it to the bone. Uh, there are lots of different sizes and shapes of muscles within the leg, but all of these muscles <clears throat> are considered skeletal muscles. Remember that you also have cardiac and smooth muscle inside your body, but because these are attached to the skeleton, they're considered skeletal muscles, and they are all responsible for helping with the function of movement. When we talk about moving your appendages on your body, these skeletal muscles help with that process. So the next thing that I want to move on to that is also key in the movement process is the bone. When we talk about the skeletal system, it has lots of functions. So this bone doesn't just um, partner with the muscles to help with movement, but this bone inside the chicken leg also offers support and structure to the body. Um, many of the bones inside our body also protect some of um, our vital organs um, and other uh, important pieces of our human body systems. Um, bones also produce blood cells and so we're going to crack open this bone today and take a look at the different structures that make up this bone and talk a little bit about how those apply to the functions. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to wrap up this chicken leg in a paper towel because this does get a little messy um, and I want you to be really careful when you do this because broken bones can be pretty sharp but I'm going to wrap this up just to you know, minimize the amount of mess we're making. I'm going to hold the bone on each end, and then I'm actually going to press it against the edge of the counter back here. Um, once it's broken, <clears throat> again, be really careful with this because broken bone can be sharp. 
I'm actually going to take a look. We already kind of talked about this hinge joint here, and you can see some of the tendons and ligaments within that hinge joint. And if I pull it this direction, you can actually see what kind of acts as like the kneecap and all the cartilage there. That cartilage is really key to minimizing the amount of friction within the joint um, to protect the bone and make it longer lasting. A lot of people that end up having to have joint replacements, like a knee or a hip replacement, replacement, shoulder or elbow, usually have that done because this cartilage has worn down over a period of time and excessive amounts of friction from movement of the joint have begun to actually deteriorate the bone here and it causes some damage and some pretty severe pain. So it's nice that we have um, those medical options these days. But uh, <clears throat> now that we've taken a look at that joint, I want to actually talk to you about the structures inside the bone and I'm going to use the other end of the bone for that. So I'm going to open this up really quick and then we'll take a look at it and talk about the different layers of the bone. Okay friends, so I've got my <clears throat> long bone opened up here um, and it's, uh, I got to be honest with you, what you find inside is sometimes surprising for some people. Um, you can see the red coloring here. A lot of people assume that this is blood, but it actually is the marrow found inside the bone and I can actually take my uh, probe here and scoop off some of that marrow to let you see. Marrow has a red color like blood because T cells are found in your bone marrow that are responsible for producing red blood cells, but this is a much thicker, I mean you can see here, um, the consistency of this is much thicker than blood. If I put blood on the end of this probe, it would have already dripped off onto the paper, but this is sitting right here on the end of the probe because of um, the thickness of it. <clears throat> so it's not blood, but it does have that red color because it helps with the production of blood. So there are some blood cells present here. There's also a lot of fat and nutrients and mineral content found inside the bone, which is why a lot of times you'll find that carnivores will chew on bones in an attempt to break them open and get to this bone marrow because it offers a very nice uh, nutritional substitute for a carnivore who can't find meat. Um, and I want you to look, so the outermost layer of this bone here is called compact bone. It does have a very thin membrane around it called periosteum that just offers some extra support and structure, but most of the strength from your bone actually comes from this compact bone layer. It's incredibly strong and durable. Um, we all know that bones can be broken, but it's certainly not done easily. Um, when you do get through the compact bone, and again, we've already looked at the bone marrow inside. That's usually found down here in the hollow portion of the bone, but up here towards the end of a long bone, what you see is um, spongy bone. And this is not soft by any stretch like a sponge would be. It's not squishy. It's still hard and calcified. Um, I'm sorry, not calcified, um, but it is still hard and rigid, almost like um, any sort of calcified structure that you've held before, but it has holes in it, a lot like a sponge. Um, and those holes are full of, um, again, bone marrow and nutrient and mineral that is stored by the bone and used later in life. So that's, um, I think you can see some of the holes there. I hope you can see some of the holes there found in that spongy bone. But it gets, uh, it gets its name from the holes, much like um, a kitchen sponge. So uh, that, that about sums up the lab that we have going on today. Um, give me just a second and we'll do a quick review of everything we've looked at today. All right, so that is the chicken leg dissection lab. Um, I hope that you had a really great time today. Just in review, what we looked at was the integumentary system. The primary function of that system is to protect um, the rest of the body from uh, disease and infection, to protect it from extreme temperature changes, to um, protect it from just day-to-day -day wear and tear. Um, we also looked at the muscular system. Uh, the muscular system's primary function is also for movement, um, protection, and uh, 
all of those kinds of things. And then we looked at the skeletal system. The skeletal system's primary function is movement as well, but the skeletal system is also used to provide support and structure and protection, and it produces red blood cells. So now that we've taken a look at all of those different systems and talked about their functions, looked at the structures that help with that process, the last thing that you need to do with your lab manual today is write your lab conclusion. Instructions for the lab conclusion can be found here at the bottom of your data tables. Make sure that you've included all of your observations in your data tables today and read through those procedures um, one more time. Then go ahead and get started on your lab conclusion. If you have any questions while you're working, let me know. I hope you guys had a great time and I'm looking forward to getting back in the lab with you soon.